Vibe coding, verb. It means to build apps with only natural language using artificial intelligence. In a sentence, I vibe coded a gym schedule app just by typing what I wanted. A few days after vibe coding became a thing, I realized that this is actually going to be a movement and become an actual term that people use. And I actually told a lot of people, I think it's gonna be bigger than prompt engineering. Three weeks ago, I said, checking in on this in a year, basically comparing prompt engineering and vibe coding, as you can see here now, as of today, March 5th, take a look at the Google Trends we can clearly see vibe coding is catching up. It is quickly becoming the biggest thing in tech. Y Combinator just said that a quarter of the winter 2025 batch, 95% of the lines of code are LLM generated. That's not a typo. The age of vibe coding is here. The trend is absolutely clear. You have to literally be ignorant and close your eyes to not see the fact that people are using AI and AI alone with no coding experience to build mobile apps and web apps. And so I've been building apps with AI alone for about six months now. And over this period of time, it's gotten so much easier. And so in this video, I want to talk about three things. The first thing I want to talk about is what are people saying about vibe coding? What are people on both sides? And so the second thing I want to talk about is what tools are people using when they vibe code, right? What are the different types of tools? It's important to understand where the tools are going, not at a specific tool level, but the type types of tools. And then I want to discuss what tool I think is coming right around the corner that I think is going to change everything about how we create apps, specifically mobile apps. And then the third thing I want to talk about is how I would get started to begin learning about these tools so that you can actually implement it in your life, whether you're trying to start a company, whether you're trying to get promoted, or whether you're trying to take an idea in your head and turn it into reality because you think that sounds awesome. Let's talk about vibe coding. Okay, so what are people saying about vibe coding? And I don't think any cultural event captures people's feelings more than this game right here. So this is Levels, and he created this game that is now making $58,000 per month. This game is making $58,000 a month, and he's created it basically just by talking to Cursor, asking how to create a game, and then he created the initial flight simulator, and then he added enemies, and then he added the ability to shoot balls, and then he just told Cursor, hey, when someone gets hit with these balls, when you shoot from the plane, it should make their health go down. And he's now created this game that hit $57,000 per month, and he's doing it by selling blimps. So in this game, there are little blimps that you can buy as an advertiser, because many people are playing this game, and someone purchased one of these blimps, I believe it was this company, chatbase.com, and they purchased this for 5,000 US dollars. And this is when his revenue got up to $30,000 per month, and that was two days ago. He is now currently at $56,000 per month. And he created this game around 12 days ago, so less than two weeks ago, he created this game. And it all started with him, a full multiplayer with Python WebSocket server that receives and broadcasts all player positions every 100 milliseconds. We'll ask Cursor to build a WebSocket server to receive and broadcast player positions, then read it with JavaScript. So he's almost at $300,000 per month building all types of different apps. And so I think this Reddit post captures how people are feeling and the two different types of reactions that you can have to vibe coding. And the first one is this one by standard net 6031. He said, no one is hiring someone with a project with such poor security practices. Then independent pitch said revenues from this game says differently. I haven't played the game or seen the code, but it vitally is a working product with a user base and it isn't simple. How much better will it get by the end of the year? How long until it can make office software or any of the millions of apps that are floating out there by itself? Just this alone, the ability to imagine an app, then have it come into existence will be a huge game changer. And it already is. And I think this tweet captures this whole phenomenon pretty well. 
He said, AI will replace NPC knowledge work and expand schizo knowledge work. And the distinction between the two is, you know, NPC knowledge work is routine, repetitive, predictable cognitive tasks like writing code. And anytime your tasks are repetitive and what the result of what you do goes on the internet, AI is going to quickly learn it and will be able to perform it in a repeatable manner. And that's what we're seeing with Cursor right now. Cursor, one of the tools we'll talk about in a second, uses AI to effectively build code. It's taken the repetitive process of writing code and all of the data from Stack Overflow, and it's turned it into a machine that can create code and create full-on applications. But the application of these tools and building apps that satisfy your curiosity and just building fun apps and then making content about it on the internet, like Levels does, is schizo knowledge work because it's more nonlinear, associative. He decided that he would just make that little app and people started following along. People enjoyed the fact that you could create this little game. And since it was on Twitter, a place where everyone hangs out, many people started going and playing the game. And this caused advertisers to want to put advertising. And now he's making $56,000 per month. And so this sentiment, I agree with. The repetitive tasks are going to get replaced by AI. And so there are many tools that people are talking about that allow you to just build an app like this, right? So I can take a screenshot of this Evernote site right here. And then I could go to a tool called V0 and say, please create a notes app that looks exactly like this and upload the screenshot. All right, this is V0. And then I could go to Lovable and we could do the same thing. This is another tool people are talking about. And now this will start building the app. We can go to Replit, which is another tool people are talking about vibe coding. And you can just run this. We can go to Bolt and we can run it just like that. And so this first type of tool is a web-based prototype tools. That's how I think of these tools right here. These are good for creating prototypes. You just type in what you want and then it does all the coding for you. And then it will basically, it'll do all the work for you. And once it's done, it will actually just show you what it looks like. And as you can see here, this is Replit, just doing a bunch of work, coding, adding code, doing stuff, who knows what it's doing. And look, and as you can see here, so this is V0, it created this right here. As you can see, this is Lovable's creation. It created this little notes app. What happens if we press new note? Nothing. Can we mark these off? We can check these off, but we can't add new tasks. We can check these off on Replit. So this is Replit's work right here. It created this. Looks kind of weird when it's wide. Bolt, uh, you know, has a very clean interface, but I don't see the to-do list. Um, and yeah, and so once you're done coding, you can just continue to add more. And so for all of them, I'm going to say, let me make sure that we can add to the to-do list because we can't add the, to the tasks on any of them. So we can uh, ask for an edit. So now V0 is going to edit this site right here, but we're going to do the same thing on Lovable as well. We're going to go to the sidebar. We're going to ask it to create that on Replit as well. We're going to do the same thing. And then on Bolt, we are going to do, once again, we are going to do that same thing. We're going to ask for the adding things on the to-do list. And here we go. We are on Vercel. We can add a task and we can see if it adds it. There we go. It worked on V0. Let's see if it worked here. We can now add a task on Lovable. Hello. We can now add a task on Replit. Let's see. And they all designed it differently, which is, oh, error on Replit. Come on, man. That's not cool. Let's see. Let's see if Bolt came in strong. Hello. There we go. So all of them except for Replit worked. But when you get an error, because many people are saying, oh, Riley's lying about vibe coding. It's not actually that easy. You have to go through torment. It's torture to deal with errors. Oh, really? Copy error. Go to sidebar. Paste error and say, duh, please fix. And then we just sit here and wait go drink a smoothie while it edits it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is torture. I feel tortured right now. It's such a torturous process. God. God, why is there a dog? He's right. He said it doesn't work like you think you guys don't believe this guy. He's telling you half the story and not showing you the torture you have to go through and the constant errors. The AI is finally done fixing the problem. We can just hit new task. Yes. 
add. Oh, great, now it works. The error is fixed. All I had to do was paste in the error into the app that we were using and then AI did it and solved the problem. And so these are type one web-based prototype tools. They're good at starting projects very fast, but I would argue they aren't very good at creating long projects and they're not very good at finishing projects, especially if they have hard features like a database, like payments, or authorization. So this right here is Cursor, and this right here is Windsurf. And I would say Cursor is considered to be the best AI coding tool in the world. It has the most users, it, is the, it has the highest valuation. And both of these tools are forks of VS Code. So VS Code came out about a decade ago, and it was created by Microsoft, and it's where a lot of developers uh, build their apps. And so their code base lives in VS Code, except the code is open source, so you can actually download the code of VS Code to your computer and you can actually build on top of it. And so that's what Cursor and Windsurf did. And for this reason, it seems to be much better at understanding what's going on in your entire code base. And so what I've found is those web-based tools, Replit, Bolt, Lovable, V0, you can't really code for that long. They start to have a lot more errors the longer you use them. Whereas if you use Cursor for like a month and get really good, you can actually code. I can code for 10 straight hours on Cursor on the same project and be fine. These tools are significantly better. But as you can see here, they're a lot more confusing. Like the front interface of Cursor and Windsurf don't make that much sense. Like you can't really see what's going on here. Like what do you even do once you get to the app? Where's the text box that allows me to do whatever I want? And so that's the only gap that you need to pass. And so if I were you, if I was getting started, I would start with Cursor and I would use this strategy right here. And we're going to do it on Cursor and Windsurf at the same time. So on Cursor, you can hit clone repo. And what you're going to do is you're going to paste in this link. And so this is template two. This has been used tens of thousands of times. This is a Next.js project that my business partner and I created. And it's basically like a blank slate. So all you do is you press enter after hitting clone repo. And then you're just going to basically type in new, new project. And this is going to create a brand new project on cursor. And, the pro and this process is identical on Windsurf, right? What you can do is you can hit clone repository right here. It's just not centered. And then you can paste in that same exact thing right here. And then we can hit new folder. It's the same exact process because remember they're forks of the same app. And so we can just say Windsurf test. Doesn't matter what you name it. Just make sure you don't delete this folder. And so then you basically just hit open just like you did on cursor. And we just create this and we're, we hit open. So these are the same process. All we're doing is creating a new project. And as you can see here, these files are loaded on the left sidebar. And as you can see here on Windsurf, these are added here on the left sidebar. And so now what we can do is we can type whatever we want here. So let's create, I want you to create a chat with Anthropic Claude 3.7 Sonnet. And I want this interface to be as minimalistic as possible. Like I want you to have heart, like nothing on the page, but like make it look sleek and like trendy in a way that's like this modern, hyper minimalistic chat app, like so minimalistic. And I want to be able to communicate with Claude. And so I can take this prompt. I don't know where I got that idea from. It just kind of hit me. And so we can run this both in uh, Cursor's chat, which was formerly known as Composer, and we can put it in Cascade, which is Windsurf's Cascade. And so what we can do is we can press uh, Enter, and then we can press Enter. And this will actually create the app here. And as you can see here, it actually gave us a place to paste in our API key. And I'm not going to go too deep into this project, but let's just get it running. And you can see here, it actually created the server. Okay, so I paste in the API keys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on localhost 3001. And then I'm also going to click on localhost 3000. And so there we go. So we have it open. And this is what Cursor created. And this is what Windsurf created. So I can say hello. And hopefully nothing happened. <laughs> Rest in peace. Hello. We also got an error. There's something wrong. So when we get an error, we can just copy the error message, paste it back in and say error. Please fix what is going on. So it literally searched the internet and that's what makes uh, both Windsurf and Cursor. Cursor also added this feature, it can search the internet. 
And it did some research and I researched the model name and it figured out exactly what it needed to do. And then now it says it's open on 3006. So if we go, so if we go to 3006, we can see the app here and we can say, please uh, tell me about tacos. And there we go. It's telling us about tacos. It's not in the best format. That's something we could easily fix. Uh, tell me about pizza. This is the cursor version. Please make all of the text bright red and use a, cr a cursive font and beautiful. For the version on Windsurf, we can say, uh, please make the text tiny, absolutely tiny and make it look old school type font, like from the 19... 20s. Okay, and so now here is the cursor version. This is kind of fun. So hello. All right. And so it's kind of this weird design. Let's see the uh, other version here. Ooh, I kind of like this one. Hello, tell me about the best movie ever. I like this vibe. I actually like this uh, color here. Uh, tell me how to code an app. This is very old school. I actually like this a lot. It's kind of nice. What does it look like? Zoomed out. And so, yeah, so in a couple of prompts, we created these two stylized AI coding tools. And uh, obviously this is more intimidating, but I could go on for a while. And if you actually follow my videos uh, using this template, you can very quickly set up a database. So you could actually have these chats save to the database, separated in chats, and AI can do basically all of that for you. And this does require a little bit more learning, but you can actually deploy this to the internet. All you need to do is tell Cursor to deploy it to Vercel. I've made a lot of other videos on that, so I'm not gonna cover that today. If you wanna get a taste for these vibe coding tools, uh, the two we've talked about so far are these web-based prototype tools and then IDEs. So Cursor, Replit, Bolt, and Lovable, and then Cursor and Windsurf. So here we had V0, Lovable, Bolt, Replit. Here we had Cursor and Windsurf. But Type 3, Type 3 are the tools that I believe are coming next. In fact, multiple companies have reached out to me and given demos where there's basically no interface to these tools, and it's made specifically for vibe coders. I'll show you an example. I believe that this is actually how vibe coding tools for the masses are going to look. A literal interface, so an app that you literally just type things into, right? You type a meditation app with uh, guided breathing, and then you just hit create. And so I actually got to test this tool the other day, and right now it's in closed beta. And so right now this tool is in closed beta, but it basically just literally creates an app. So you could type in an Airbnb clone and then hit create. And then it literally just creates the app. And then you just like shake it to edit it. It was kind of weird, but it was a really interesting experience. It wasn't amazing. This was another tool that was used to create really fast mobile apps. And I've actually been very passionate about mobile apps because mobile apps are like a really niche thing that not everyone can create, right? A lot of people have had Squarespace, WordPress, the opportunity to build those tools relatively easily. Not many people have been able to create mobile apps. And so this tool right here is called Rourke. And this is another tool that lets you quickly create mobile apps. And yeah, so that's basically the range of tools. And there's going to be so many more tools and way more AI models that come out soon. And I didn't even get to the tools to create apps from China. China is also rele releasing cheaper tools that are like nearly as good as Cursor and Windsurf. And so there's a lot to unpack here. And so that's why I wanted to create this community. It's called Software Composer on softwarecomposer.com. This link right here will take you to this page. And if you click on this button, you'll be taken to a uh, page. As you can see here, we have almost uh, 12,000 members in here. And we're actually starting something new. We're going to be doing a live stream on Saturday. And so Anj is a senior developer, and he's actually going to help people with their projects and actually debug and help people get through uh, their vibe coding projects uh, anywhere they get stuck. And we're also just going to be talking about coding. And so I'm going to be there. Anj 
my business partner, he will be there and we're going to try and help people get stuck uh, and move along with their projects because that's my biggest passion is helping people actually just create the apps that they want to create. And so that is on softwarecomposer.com and I'll see you guys here for the next video.